the problem is, um, it is hard to dis also I can clearly feel that I'm black, but also it's really hard to find the right words to explain. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 WTF moments on this morning. She loves spiders so much, she sleeps alongside them at night. Isn't that true, Holly? Yes. <laughs> our next guest, Samantha Ramsdell, says her mouth is a whopping 9.25 centimetres wide. But, um, can I say what we use? A whole tube of KY jelly? Oh! <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the weirdest, funniest, and most confusing interviews to take place on daytime TV. Let us know in the comments which one left you wondering what was going on. Number 20, Celine Dion. What's the craziest thing you've ever done while drunk? Well, probably wasn't quite as bad as changing your name to Celine Dion online. Good morning, Celine. Morning. But that's exactly what Thomas Dodd did over Christmas. He was so drunk, in fact, that he completely forgot about it until getting a letter in the post confirming his change of name. The last concert that I put on was Celine Dion Live in Vegas. Um, a few drinks later, I don't remember going to bed, but I must have at some point. Luckily, he wasn't too upset about having to suddenly assume the identity of the Canadian superstar, and bizarrely said he was in no rush to change his name back. If you keep the name, then you'll have to change your driving license, your yeah. passport, uh, all your all your utilities, the whole thing. Yeah, I'm going whole hog, I'm keeping it. Rochelle and Philip enjoyed talking to him, but unfortunately, Celine Dion herself did not make an appearance. Number 19, My Dog Hates Ben Shepherd. If you've ever wanted to telepathically communicate with a beloved pet, look no further than Beth Lee Crowther, one of the nation's foremost pet psychics. Yeah, really. Lee Crowther was invited onto the show in November of 2020 to explain what the world's dogs thought of Joe Biden winning the US presidential election. I did link in with them to find out their thoughts about Joe uh, being the president. They do know about it, they're very excited. But there was a far greater mystery she needed to solve. Why one caller's dog hated broadcaster Ben Shepard. According to her, the dog is jealous that her owner gets so excited every time Shepard comes on TV. My dog Millie ha <laughs> hates Ben Shepard and Tipping Point, which is a shame because that's a good show. It's a very good show. She gets hysterical nice. if she sees or <laughs> hears Ben Shepard on TV. Communing with a pet psychic over the phone is just as odd as it sounds. Number 18, Terrifying Teacher. Would you let this man teach your child with tattoos all over his body and face, including his eyes? French teacher Sylvain Helene joined the studio by video link to show off his extensive tattoos and extreme body modifications. Tattoos, though still not always appropriate for teachers, are a common sight nowadays. But Sylvain has also had ink injected into his eyes to make them completely black. And I won't recommend it to uh, anyone because it's painful. Full. Uh, you can't see a thing for a couple of days after. You have to put some uh, eye drop uh, every two hours, I guess. The procedure is so dangerous, he says he had to go to a different country to have it done because it's illegal in France, and he advises viewers against having it done. But despite his looks, he worked as a teacher for over a decade until the parents of a child at his school made a complaint that got him sacked. The policy in the classroom is that um, the kids can ask you any questions they like out of lessons, but in lessons, they, 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 it's all about the teaching. Number 17, Spider Collection. She loves spiders so much, she sleeps alongside them at night. Isn't that true, Holly? Yes. Nearly half of households in the UK have at least one pet, but most of those pets will be cats and dogs, not exotic spiders. Not the case for eight-year-old Holly and her family in Cheshire. She keeps pet snakes and insects, but is particularly passionate about spiders, boasting a collection of more than 50. So the animals that I keep is tarantulas, scorpions, millipedes, snails, cockroaches, cats, Dogs. Spiders are some of the most hated and feared animals in the world, which is why it's absolutely insane that Holly has already accumulated a collection that would put lots of adult keepers to shame. Still, if you've got arachnophobia, the thought of having 50 spiders in your house voluntarily might be too much to bear. Hello, George. What type of snake is he, Holly? 
Is a royal python or a ball python? Number 16, Christmas song for dogs. If you've got a dog, get them in the room and have your phone recording in a minute because yes. we're about to play the VT and we just want to see what the reaction is. Dogs probably don't know what Christmas is, just that once a year they'll get some special treats and maybe a big plate of leftover turkey. But that didn't stop dog food manufacturer Tails.com from producing and releasing a Christmas song specifically designed for dogs. Sit. Sit. Oh, good girl. Sit. Sit. Oh, good girl. Though it was claimed a lot of research had been undertaken to compose a song dogs would respond to when the single debuted on this morning, it may as well not exist at all. A huge group of dogs were filmed while listening to the tune and didn't react, some of them even lying down to go to sleep. I was, I was quite hoping they'd all jump up at the squeaky toy, but they didn't even do that really. Um, they got bored. There was a bit of head turn and a bit of what, what's that? Yeah! Raise the Wolf definitely wasn't that year's Christmas number one. Number 15, The Doll Man. Over the past 15 years, Bob has spent over £100,000 collecting over 200 love dolls. If you thought collecting spiders was bad, wait until you hear about Bob Gibbons, who has one of the largest collections of love dolls in the entire world. Boasting 240 dolls and a £100,000 hole in his pockets from such an expensive hobby, Bob insists that there's nothing inappropriate about his collection. He's even married and has two kids. Do you have favourites? Oh, I think they're all my favourite. This item is made even more bizarre by the producers ramming the studio with as many of Bob's dolls as possible, filling up all the square seats they had. He and his wife dress the dolls up in different clothes and pose them for photographs to post online. Some of them are dressed way. quite provocatively, though. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, you you've, you've dressed them, haven't yeah. you? Number 14, World's Biggest Mouth. Says her mouth is a whopping 9.25 centimetres wide. It's not too bizarre to have the world's biggest mouth. Someone has to, after all. But a lot of baffling choices were made during this interview that only make it unusual viewing. Hi, Samantha! Hi, how are you? Samantha Ramsdell wasn't able to join Philip and Davina in the studio, but that didn't matter because they were graced with cardboard cutouts of Samantha's face made to scale. This was so we could see exactly what fits between her jaws. Look at the girth. <laughs> yeah, I can perform. So when, when, you're, no, when, you're, on <laughs> when you're on TikTok, uh, I'm assuming you get requests. Yes. Even weirder than the fact they somehow managed to talk about mouths for 10 minutes, however, was the fact her status as having the biggest female mouth in the world isn't even properly verified. Number 13, Elf Dolls. Love dolls are one thing, but Nick Rowett's interests are even more niche. He's got a collection of life-sized elf dolls in his house. Right, okay, starting from my left, um, which I think probably comes out on your right, uh, that's Farishi, she's a forest elf. Uh, this is Iche, she's a drow. Uh, so it's a dark elf or a night elf. Uh, this is Kavina, she's the, uh, the queen gold elf. This interview was festive themed and happened around Christmas, but none of Nick's elves were actually Christmas elves. They were all fantasy elves like you'd see in Lord of the Rings. This arguably makes the whole thing even weirder than if they were giant Christmas elves. You say they're great to cuddle. Yeah. I mean, Sorcia's wearing full armor. I don't, I don't cuddle Sorcia at the moment. Nick's blown around fifteen thousand pounds on this troop and says he's always been interested in elves, but Holly and Philip still can't wrap their heads around this. And the low-quality video link makes the elves look even more uncanny. Um, oh, well, I haven't really sort of gone out to 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 have any any dates uh, of late number 12 martina big obviously you are you no stranger to controversy um you've described yourself as uh, as you know a, a true african german woman martina big has been causing a media storm ever since she went public with her transracial identity and the fact that she wants to be black on top of somehow acquiring the biggest breasts in the world um then uh, then these are 18.9 you want more than that. After having injections of melanin to physically change her skin colour, eye colour, and even the texture of her hair, she went on this morning to explain herself. For all the controversy, Martina is still convinced that she isn't doing anything wrong. 
though 99% of the viewing public wholly disagree with her. Perhaps more baffling than the fact Martina Big exists is the fact she's been interviewed on ITV more than once. The problem is, um, it is hard to dis also, I can clearly feel that I'm black, but also it's really hard to find the right words to explain. Number 11, Ghost Romance. I waited and waited for a while and then I got a little bit worried. I thought maybe I'd scared it off by being too keen. Between 2017 and 2020, Amethyst Realm made many appearances on This Morning to discuss her escapades, having an affair with a ghost, getting engaged to the ghost and then tragically breaking off their engagement. Amethyst claimed that her fiancé caught her in bed with a ghost and that she slept with lots of them, eventually finding long-term stability with her spectral boyfriend, Ray, with whom she wanted to have a baby. So why was this so personal? Why was it, the feeling different for you? Um, I fell in love with it, I guess. Um, just, it's for one. But things all went downhill in 2020 when she went on holiday and Ray began staying out late with other ghosts who Amethyst thought were a bad influence. Yeah, I think maybe he started doing drugs and partying a bit much. But maybe one day she'll find the right ghost for her. Number 10, Samantha, the raunchy robot. Um, why, why, why? Why is this necessary? Why is it necessary? One of the strangest guests to ever grace the sofa was Samantha, who was at such a high risk of saying something inappropriate that she wasn't allowed to say a word. This is because Samantha was an advanced sex doll with an integrated AI, one of the most expensive on the market. Do you think we could get more sensual? And then? I can take many times much more love and just because you can give it. While the technology has a long way to go until we're at risk of being taken over by machines, Samantha still has more than a few strange features. Philip points out that because of her realistic skin and cold temperature, she feels more like a corpse to the touch, and both he and Holly are more than a little uncomfortable hearing about her family mode. She's got Samantha has a family mode. Which oh, no, it's, in, it's impossible. She what she's going to read the kids a bedtime story? Number nine, roadkill for dinner. So he would be, he would go and have a look and say, yeah, it's fresh. So in the car it would go, and we'd we'd take it home and and prepare it. We all need to save a bit of money every now and again, but few would go to the extremes that this mum engages in regularly. In an effort to save on expensive cuts of meat, Laura decides that she was going to start serving her husband and young son roadkill. Fresh part is definitely the, the main thing, and um, we usually find that um, when we find anything that's fresh, it's first thing in the morning, so it's been hit overnight, which is quite natural. She stresses that if it's been crushed by a car or has been on the roadside for more than a few hours, she wouldn't dream of taking it home but it still might be too much to bear if you have a weak stomach. She even tells them she once served up a pigeon that had been electrocuted on a power line. We saw a pigeon fall from the sky. It had been electrocuted by an overhead power line. Already cooked. Oh. <laughs> Number eight, Wonder Woman. The shape of your body is, is just so extreme. I mean, teeny, teeny, tiny ways. Big boobs. If beauty is pain, no one knows this better than Pixie Fox self-confessed plastic surgery addict obsessed with achieving the physique of a cartoon character. One of the most extreme alterations she's had is having six of her ribs removed in order to get the tiniest waist possible. For me, I see myself as a science project. I am basically a pioneer in the beauty industry. She says that her surgeries haven't necessarily put her life in danger and that if she's careful, she'll be all right. But when she's half a million pounds out of pockets, maybe her finances are what's really in danger. So, I mean, what, so what is it? What size is your waist? Uh, this is a 16 inch corset, so it would be something like 16 And is that, what, is that what, what you want to... to... Uh, the most unique procedure of all, however, was when she travelled to India to have her eye colour surgically altered. Ugh. Number seven, the intimacy coach. Are you hands on? I am prepared to be hands on, yes. Right, well. But I never say what people do wrong. Meet the woman who gets paid to watch struggling couples get intimate with one another. Camilla Constance is an intimacy coach who helps people with communication in the bedroom, among other things, and apparently gets hands-on with her clients if the job calls for it. 
even sitting on the end of the bed and watching. Very often on the end of the bed. Do you? Yeah, I'll sit cross-legged. I'm quite kind of get, get, get quite hippie-ish and sit cross-legged and I'll hold the energy. I love holding the space for a couple. She decided to take this route after her first marriage drifted apart and she began experimenting to work out what kind of life she wanted. And years later, she's managed to turn this into a career. As the interview goes on, the details get increasingly explicit, which Philip and Holly find fascinating. You've never, like, leant over and smacked his ass and gone, stop it! <laughs> Number six, biggest bum in the world. So you thought, right, well, the only option here is to go and have surgery. Of course, if you want to have a bigger bum. Of course, the surgery what? is the next step. Natasha Crown said she never intended to have the biggest rear in the world, but somewhere along the line decided that this was what she wanted. These bum lift surgeries are very high risk though because they involve injecting fat from other parts of the body into the buttocks, which has Philip and Holly understandably concerned. I what? won't call it danger because it's my own fat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is dangerous because it, it's killed many women all over the world. Natasha is about to go in for her fourth bum lift and is on an intense diet of fatty foods, particularly chocolate, to prepare her body. Despite the dangers, Natasha and her 83-inch bottom are certainly committed to earning that world record. At the moment, your bottom is 80 inches? 83, 84, 84. Yeah. 84. Yeah. Number five, the haunted doll. Right. Two o'clock in the morning, I woke up and heard like a swishing noise going around my side of the bed. So what, like the, uh, like the dress? Things took a turn for the spooky when Debbie Merrick brought her haunted doll onto the show. Despite the fact she doesn't even like dolls and can't look at the thing when it's in the studio next to her. They found out the doll was possessed when it scratched Debbie's husband in the night. And I looked down and there was a lot of scratches all over my knee. Shutting the doll in the shed didn't help either. And the incidents got so extreme that the doll came on again after being bought by a paranormal collector. It seems everywhere this doll goes, people can't get any peace. And they even get a psychic and Yvette Fielding on to analyze the encounters. The nasty part of the doll is kind of a male energy that seems to come and go. And I feel that that's the person that was responsible for, for taking the life of the little girl. Number four, Iris Jones. I couldn't walk the next day. <laughs> I felt as if I'd been riding a horse. After the death of her husband, 80-year-old Iris Jones got on Facebook and met Mohammed Ahmed, an Egyptian man in his 30s who proposed to her within days of sending the first message. He proposed after 15 days Did and I said, you are absolutely mad. While Iris and Mohammed have plenty of critics because of their 45-year age difference, Iris is sure of her feelings, saying she's never sent him any money and they're happily engaged. But Iris is quite the character, and this segment is taken to the next level when she spills the beans on their first intense night together, where they used a whole tube of KY jelly. It's too much information for 10 in the morning. Anyway, but um, can I say what we used? A whole tube of KY jelly? Oh! <laughs> Number three, Flat Earther. So what is that then? What am I looking at if I'm not looking at live pictures? You're looking at CGI, nothing more. There is no shortage of flat earthers in the media, and Mark Sargent, a leader in the flat earth movement, is no exception. He came on the show to talk about his alternative beliefs, including that all images of the Earth as a globe from NASA and other space agencies are 100% CGI. Sargent is firm that the Earth is flat, and this is being kept a secret because people weren't ready for it. So, I've interviewed, um, both of us, we've interviewed Tim Peake from this sofa. I know. And so I, what was I doing? Who was I talking to? Where was you, he? You were talking to a military officer, nothing more. He ends by insisting that Antarctica is one big ice wall and we're all contained in a dome. Much to Philip and Holly's confusion, it's clear from the beginning they won't get through to him. So where's the North Pole? North Pole's in the center. Number two, woman marries her dog. Found the one. She's planning now to marry the love of her life and he's with her today, her golden retriever. In mid-2019, Elizabeth Hode came on the show to explain why she's swearing off men for good after numerous failed engagements and dates. 
But while singlehood is no longer as taboo as it once was, Elizabeth takes this a step further by marrying the real love of her life live on air, Logan. I stand here today to join together Elizabeth Mary Francis Hode and Logan Humphrey II. The, the catch is that Logan is a golden retriever. While the sentiment behind this is understandable, and Logan seems like a great dog, the TV wedding ceremony is bizarre to say the least. Alison Hammond carries out the ceremony while Eamon takes Elizabeth down the aisle. Logan is even wearing a doggy tuxedo for the occasion. Even when one of you is as sick as a dog. <laughs> Number one, biggest chest in the world. Well, she has a 164 triple X chest. She's Chelsea Charms and she claims that she has the world's biggest breasts and Chelsea along with Itsy and Bitsy uh, <laughs> join us now. One of the show's most viral moments ever was when Chelsea Charms visited the studio to show off the world's largest breasts. As Philip demonstrates, each boob weighs the same as two watermelons and her bra size is 164XXX. It wasn't until out of high school that I learned to appreciate curves and yeah. The first question on the agenda is about her back. How does she cope carrying four melons around all day, every day? But Chelsea says she manages by doing plenty of back exercises. Due to some maverick surgery, Chelsea's breasts are consistently creating liquid so that they continue to enlarge. Even she doesn't know how big they'll get in the end. Are they moving? <laughs> no, but seriously, are they? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.